Have you ever wanted to be a developer but only know HTML and CSS? In today's video, I will talk about my last position as a web content and user experience assistant at the University of North Florida. Now I'm going to break the video up into sections. How I got an HTML and CSS job, the job duties, my advice, how to get an HTML and CSS job. And this is why you guys should listen to me. And yeah, I hate to say it, but the last bullet point is true. I did get fired from my first internship. The industry is cutthroat, ladies and gentlemen. And I feel like I got advice that can help out everybody. And if you would like to know more information about what happened with that first internship, put a comment down below and I'll be happy to have a conversation with you guys. Now let's talk about how I was able to get this job with just HTML and CSS. Step one, I had a portfolio of projects. Now some of these projects on the portfolio weren't finished, uh, some were finished, and I also made sure to showcase some of my courses. This was because at the time, obviously I was a student and I didn't have a lot of experience. If you find yourself in the same situation, make sure to use some of your courses from your major that are possibly similar to the position that you were trying to go for. Step two. I also used Handshake and LinkedIn together. Most colleges use this platform, and if I was you, I'd see if your college uses Handshake too. LinkedIn just being a part of the process just kind of helps out because you can check out companies LinkedIn or check out certain employees that work at the company and maybe make connections. That's kind of why I was using Handshake and LinkedIn together. Understand Handshake is like a very bare bones job posting website, but it's obviously meant for a lot of universities. That's why they use them and sometimes there'll be positions on handshake that won't be on indeed or linkedin so using handshake to find the positions and then possibly using linkedin to find the people that actually work at these places and try to send a more formal message kind of shows that you're going the extra mile to try and get this position <laughs> After applying to jobs, I made sure to follow up with the companies, usually gave them about a week or two before I would message them about updates regarding my application. Step four. I then did a lot of studying and reviewing the job description, and this is also where I did my mock interview. I had some friends and family help me out, ask questions that I thought would be asked during the interview. Step five. The best advice I could give here would just be to try to be yourself, make sure to go into the interview with questions about the job, and try to be as honest as you can be during the interview. Here are the job duties that I was asked to do during this position at UNF. Now I want you guys to understand when I was first hired, I was asked to do totally different projects than a year later into my position. When I was first hired, I was doing a lot of programming projects, I was helping out a lot with the university's website, and then a year into my position, things Things kind of shifted due to other managers leaving and because of that I was now asked to do more tech support tech support on their recording studio or the VLC which is their VR lab now if we were to take a look at the actual job description from this position at UNF it would state the following assist with other unit projects as needed most jobs have this listed somewhere on the job application and this just lets you know as an employee that your job can change when it comes to the job duties in the future Sure. Now, this is the advice I'd give to the younger version of myself who was looking for this type of position. You need to have job titles in mind. And I'm talking actual job titles like webmaster, HTML email developer, website editor, web content assistant, which is the position I had at UNF, website support specialist, content editor. There are more positions. You just have to do the work and research them. And this is obviously to make sure that they use HTML and CSS or whatever skills you're trying to make sure you meet with the job, this is where you do your research. Make sure to have a portfolio or LinkedIn. Now, if you don't want to go through the trouble of making a portfolio, you're getting tired of making website after website, you can literally just have your portfolio on LinkedIn. You can add those projects. You just need to make sure that your overall LinkedIn is a full body of work and anything that you add to it is really, really strong work from you. Have a schedule for applying and make sure to follow up with the companies. Have practice mock interviews. This is the step where you will make mistakes and grow. You need to make sure that you're actually trying out and doing doing these practice mock interviews. If you are going the tech support route, it is a little different, but if you are going the coding route, not all jobs do this, but most jobs do. They'll either make you look at code or they'll ask you to code. So you need to make sure that you've had practice doing these type of interviews. And obviously you can do this for any type of position. You just need to format it for yourself and for the position or positions that you're going for. And that's it for today's video. See you gamers later. Peace out.